everyone. I'm Nicole Harris. And I'm Callie Tessier. And this is our podcast, Between, Between Two, Two Fans. Fans. So today's episode is FIAD Components with Brian Lawrence and Neil Schwalik. So, Neil and Brian, would you like to tell us about your timeline at Horton? All right, I'm Brian Lawrence, Senior Application Engineer uh, at Horton. I've uh, been here about 16 years. Fun fact, I actually worked for Neil when I first started for about a week and then got tapped on the shoulder to uh, go to On Road. Worked there for about seven years, and then I think about 2015, uh, started working with Neil on the off-road. Hello, uh, Neil Schwalik, uh, lead sales engineer. I've been with Horton for 28 years, I guess. Um, started a, as an application engineer, um, worked in Europe for a couple of years, got into sales in um, basically 2000, and been here ever since, and been basically doing the uh, mining and construction vertical for the last, oh, six years or so, and worked closely with Brian to take care of our customers. What is your guys' education background? Uh, so I went to the, uh, Mankato State University, got a bachelor's degree there, and then uh, went to work for another company here locally in uh, Minnesota. And then decided to go back to school and went down to the University of Central Florida. Go Knights. Okay. <laughs> and um, got a master's degree down there in precision engineering and manufacturing. Nice. Neil? Uh, I went to the U of M. Um, graduated in 96. Uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering. And uh, that's the extent of my education. Very nice. Do you guys have any hobbies that's unrelated to Horton or just curiosity? Uh, yeah, like uh, classic cars, hot rides, that sort of thing, back to the 50s. I like to ride my Harley. Nice. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's All good right. <laughs> so getting back to the topic of the podcast, can one of you guys explain what is Fiat? And what products would be covered under the FIAD umbrella? So FIAD is front engine uh, accessory drives. And Horton primarily uses or makes um, drive hubs and manual tensioners. So our tensioners have uh, like mounting holes and typically use like a jack screw. So you loosen up the mounting holes and then use a jack screw to to tighten the the belt to what you want and then bolt down the the mounting holes or mounting bolts. Okay. Okay. Yep. In addition to the drive hubs and tensioners, which are assemblies, we also make FIAD uh, components. So these are things uh, like pulleys, crank pulleys, fan drive pulleys, fan spacers, um, uh, engine adapters. So all these are kind of the things you can see on the on the table here. Okay, so what FIAD products does Horton manufacture specifically? Do we manufacture all of them? Do we only do some of them? Most, I mean, we... Most of them. I mean, the things we don't really get into are um, auto tensioners. um, Or hydraulic tensioners, yeah. Or hydraulic tensioners, yeah. But, um, yeah, almost anything that you can put on the, you know, front of an engine is something that Horton could provide. Um, You know, we don't don't do water pumps, but... uh, Or alternators, yeah. Yeah, but... You need the rotating components, the pulleys, the fan spacers, the crank adapters, crank pulleys, um, manual tensioners, the fan drive hubs, Any, and all of those components are right in our expertise. Okay. And we, we can do different belt configurations, whether it's a, a V-belt or PK belt or PL belts. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's a good point because everything that we do is fully customizable. So um, a lot of FIAD components are basically spec by the engine manufacturers and so right. you know the oems kind of get what they get or they and they have some options but uh once in a while they have design constraints that um put them in a position where having a customized fiat component is very helpful and so those are one of the ways that we can that we can help our uh, our customers okay. in, in that in that area so you'd say it's kind of important for customers to maybe look into also buying FIAD components from us when they buy, like, a clutch or a fan or something. So that way all the parts work very well together. Yeah, I would say a part of that is the systems integration aspect, um, especially with especially with the fan clutch part of it. Um, 
it's important to have all the components working together. There's, you know, tight tolerances on, on pilots, for example, mm-hmm. um, and uh, fan positioning with hubs and so on. So, yeah. Yeah, and we, we can customize the, the fan driver, the drive hub to, to hit the, the overall length that's required to hit, put the fan in the, in the right immersion with the, the core and things. So okay. it's fully, fully customizable from the pulley ratios to the overall length. Okay. How are these important to the whole, like, system? Uh, well, they really create a – I mean, it's really a working cooling system at the end of the day is what, what we want to be able to provide. And that's for the customer. You know, that's probably the most important thing, I think, is making sure all the components interact properly and, and uh, are, are spec'd accordingly and, and work together. Yeah, you got you to gotta size your pulleys to – you know, hit your fan speed, your tiger fan speed, so you can meet your cooling requirements. And like I said, you got you to gotta keep the overall length correct. Or and we can even adjust that uh, if you want to push it in or pull it out of the, the yep. shroud a little bit to improve the cooling. Could you walk us through then a design for like a drive hub and like what all goes into that? Uh, typically, we'll, work, we'll get the inputs from the customer, like you know the belt loads and the mass of, of the like the fan adapter okay. overall length, and then. Do a FEA and, and modal analysis um, to determine where the residence points are and try to avoid those those areas. And Can then you, we'll do we'll do bearing calculations. And sometimes you gotta you gotta move the bearing around so that you can if you got like a, a large overhung load, you put the belt on the backside of the bearing, kind of counter counteract that a little bit. Could you explain to viewers what FEA is? FEA is finite element analysis. So it's where you you load up the the bracket and with the loads. Simulated loads in the application, and then you just you look for the stress points. Okay. And you, you might add, have to add a, a rib or add some material to remove the stress or reduce the stress. And that's just that to make area. sure it can handle the load, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't want brackets falling off. Okay. <laughs> Nobody really yeah. does. I don't think I don't think we've had any fall off. No, we never had applications <laughs> over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any common design constraints you run into? when designing drive hubs oftentimes so when you, when you have like a, a short first groove application um like bolt access to the front of the engine can be difficult so we can um put slots on the bracket or put holes in the in the pulley um, so you can access the bolts to, to tighten them down that's probably a common one yeah yeah sometimes the you know those pulleys can be close to the the block um we also do modular designs where you can, you know, put yep. kind of a hub on first and then attach attach a pulley to that. Um, and then I would say sort of the flip side of that is also true. We get into applications sometimes that are just extremely long. Yeah. And <laughs> we've got, you know, a long drive hub and a long fan spacer or something, and you got to just take into account, you know, that kind of a loading case um, and make sure you've got the right bearing spec and you understand all the all the inputs. Um yeah, so there's a, I guess that's a couple challenges. Um, sometimes, I don't know, fan offsets. If, we, if we're if we offset from the center line, you know, we have to do new new castings, which isn't, you know, complicated, but it's it adds a level of complexity to the project if we have to tool up a new casting. Um, but uh, that's that's those are things that we do, you know, day in and day out. For most engines are, like, is every, like, even if it was like a C9.3, are they the same across the board or are all of them different on different machineries? I mean, it varies by... Different in, in like, bolt, bolting pattern? Like, in like, a lot of them will have, have different bolt patterns that you'll have to um, account for in the, in the bracket design. Okay. The, the bolt spacing. You can't just say... I'm just saying, like, you can't take one and just, like, put it on. Like, if it was C9.3 engine, you can't put it onto another C9.3 because it might be different. Yeah, generally not. Not, yeah. I mean, They're things, all pretty things, customizable. Yeah, they... They Front all the, yeah, the bolt I mean, spacing is gonna be different, and yeah, the layouts change as the as the emissions levels change. Um, okay. The OEMs might offer, you know, they do offer options, so they might have you know different configurations of these components that you know an OEM can specify. So yeah, um, so there's gonna be a range, I think, of you know different configurations for for different engines. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, they, they might have different fan centers too. So. Where the fan mounts in, re- in you know in relation to the crankshaft, um, higher or lower, 
so it's or a, offset to the left or the right. So it's really important well. for the customer to kind of explain to you what they need and how they need yeah. to customize it to their specific application. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, how do belt loads interact with FIAD components? Uh, I kind of touched on it earlier. So if if you got a lot like a long application with a long fan adapter and, and a heavy fan, you might have to um, put the belt or the position the bearing in front of the, the belt to kind of offset some of that. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll work with our bearing suppliers to, to run the bearing analysis uh, and get our L10 lives to meet the – usually it's – a lot of them use about 10,000 hours, um, but it's going to depend on um, – what the application is some smaller units might have a little bit lower requirement for the bearing life but okay some have what up upwards of 30,000 hours for l10 for an l10 yeah yeah we anything we design is going to be minimum 10,000 hour l10 um the other thing with belts is you know wrap is important yep um so if they're if customers are changing pulley diameters and you know, moving things around or different fan centers or whatnot, you know, we want to make sure that they've got proper wrap on the belt, and, and that wrap also will drive the amount of, you know, um, resolved load. With, and we, uh, we can do either pulleys to... Yeah, we can do V-belts or... With, with that, you know, get the wrap that we need. Um, but, yeah, that's why, yeah, we have to get that loading information from the, you know, from the customer so that... So we can nail down the, you know, the right, again, the right bearing and, and get the moment load set up so it maximizes the bearing. Yep. Are there ever any challenges trying to get that information? Like, have you ever run into a customer that doesn't have that information? Yeah, no, usually if you, if you ask for it, they'll give it to you. Or we have rules of thumb that, that we use if, if they, they, if don't, they don't have know. it. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to take us through kind of the things that are on the table right now? Just kind of show everybody what we have? And how it kind of affects FIAD, how it contributes to the engine systems, how it benefits everybody. Do you want to talk about these ones? And I'll talk I, about the uh, this guy. Sure. So this is a, an adapter that we would use probably for one of our LCV clutches. Um, we can fully customize this. We can put different pilots, different bolt circles, different links. Um, Yeah, it's, we can we have four jeans that we we can make out of them. Okay. Um, different, different, like I said, different bolt circles. It's casting is more. Uh, sometimes you might have to um, beef them up a little bit, depending on how heavy your clutch and fan system is, um, and do an FEA on, on these parts. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's pretty basic components that we just use to I guess, adjust that fan immersion in, in the radiator shroud. Okay. So that one helps with fan immersion. Okay. This one also kind of helps with fan immersion, too. It's a fan spacer. Yep. And sometimes we'll use those just to adjust the fan location a small amount just to dial in that. Uh, like if you have a customer that's a little bit short on cooling, we can put that in or take one off to, again, adjust that fan immersion to, to dial in the, the cooling so they can meet their cooling requirements. And then what are these two? So, well, this one, this is a, this is a spun pulley. Okay. So this is a um, component that would mount onto a uh, standard, essentially a hub, a bracket, and a and a spindle, basically. So um, we have the ability to pretty much design and create any type of um, spun metal pulley. We don't we don't make them, but we have partners that we work with that can that can provide these. Um, and then this guy here, this is a little what we call a mini tensioner. Um, so it's this is probably our one of our most uh I guess cost effective and smallest fiat components, but this was a design that um a customer had um, uh, they were buying an alternate product from Japan and they wanted to move it uh to the u s and so we basically said okay yeah we we can do it and um so we yeah essentially made a little this mini tension there's only about six parts in here, but this mounts on a on a slotted bracket here, so when the customer gets this, they basically unscrew this and take the pulley off, and then they take take the um, you know this bolted part out and mm -hmm. they attach it to the uh, to the run, plate. It, run it through the slot, um, yeah. and 
and then attach it so I can get this thing off here. There's more threads than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll mount it onto the slotted bracket. Um, okay. Actually, this, this piece here, like that, and then that, that mounts in right there. And then they tighten it back up. And then this is this is basically used to tighten a, just a single V-belt for a, um, an AC compressor. Okay. And so then, then they just... Um, Run the jack bolt and dip. Run the jack bolt, and that'll just move up the slot and tighten the belt. And so this is again standard mini tensioner. We call it. We also make you know big manual tensioners that mount directly to the, to the block of the engine. Um, but yeah, these are all typical FIAD type of components that we make. Okay. Do you have any FIAD related stories or favorite projects? More for each of us. Sure, <laughs> sure. Don't take mine. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you gonna use? <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, uh, let's see. So yeah, probably a few years, maybe five years ago, we had a customer, large construction equ- equipment customer, that came to us, and um, we wanted to help them commodize their their drive hubs and tensioners. So we they're quite elaborate. They had multiple bearings, and we we designed it to use one bearing. Um, and we also helped those. It, it was really a win for everybody. We we helped them reduce some. They're they're actually making them on their uh, production line, so it's using up floor space. So we helped them reduce components, reduce cost, um, and then also helped them save some some labor and and their and their floor space. Nice. That was a win for everybody. I was going to say that sounds like a great thing. Yeah. I, I, I actually kind of like this guy here. I knew um, you were going to say that one. Did you? Okay. Well, I knew you worked at it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is kind of a fun one because we basically took an existing design um, that, you know, had design control in Japan um, and uh, brought it over here and made some tweaks and things and um, optimized it and, um, you know, you it actually took a fair amount of work. You think, you know, something this small, you know, oh, yeah, we can do that in, you know, two weeks. Well, uh, it takes a lot longer than, than that to uh, optimize everything. And um, But, it, you know, it's a fun little project, and, um, you know, we uh, end up selling over 10,000 of these a year now. And uh, it's a good little product, and it's used actually um, in North America and China and Japan. So turned into a sort of a little, little global product, but it was uh, it was an interesting and fun one. And, yeah, this is one that um, a particular customer we worked with, they, they didn't even realize that we had the capability of doing that type of thing, and it sort of came up almost by accident that they were um, needing a solution. And okay. we're like, oh, you know, I think we can do that. So. so from a sales aspect, do a lot of customers know we make FIAD components, or does it usually come up when they're asking about fans or clutches? Um, good question. I mean, I think, yeah, I think, I think most people do. Um, well, we kind of got into it by accident. Yeah. I mean, some a, of the stuff, you know, there's, project. you know, you know, fan spacers, you know, a lot of the engine manufacturers, they already have, they already offer them, you know. Um, adapters like this, you know, these are going to be specific to our clutch designs. Um, little, you know, little assemblies like this, um, tensioners and, and drive hubs. I think, yeah, I think most of our customers know what, what we what we provide. It's just a matter of, you know, from a sales side, asking the right questions and understanding what, you know, they're really trying to do so that if we see an opportunity to help them or to, um, you know, make their design better or enhance it in some way mm-hmm. with some kind of a customized Fiat component, you know, we can we can offer that. So it's between sales and engineering, recognizing what the customers are really trying to accomplish. Yeah, what, what their needs are and applying the right product to the right, right yeah. situation. Okay. What's the benefit of them buying a Fiat component from us versus, like, making their own and just outsourcing it? Um, probably, like I, like I mentioned earlier, it's the one product we, we saved. We reduced the, the piece part count and then also saved them labor from having to put it together. So this particular one, they just take and buy it from us and put it straight on the engine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so it's a lot, a lot less work on their end. Right. Yeah, and a lot of, you know, OEMs want to focus on building – 
machines. Mm-hmm. They got to yeah. focus on their system, their machine system, and so to make parts like this, it, it just adds um, extra complexity, extra work for them. And uh, so these are the kinds of things that we like to take on and sort of do that on their behalf and, and take that on and be able to provide these parts um, for them to make their make their life easier. Right. Quite honestly. You said earlier that we do FEA on a lot of the parts that you design. Do you also do any actual physical testing in our labs, too, on these parts? Uh, yeah, if it's close um, on the FEA, we'll, we'll usually back it up with a, a test in the lab just to verify the results. Um, we can do fan strain testing or um, strain testing of brackets in our lab. Okay. We can also, we've got a cube that we can shake a uh, three-axis cube that we can shake parts on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe you get, got some... get real-world results. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we got some pretty high-end equipment here that we can, um, yeah, we can need input vibration profiles from different engines, actually, and, yep. oh, that's really and cool. add, add amplitude and basically do accelerated life testing um, on applications that are, you know, maybe a little bit more challenging, you know, four-cylinder unbalanced engines, for example, um, you know, big uh, mining equipment that does, you know, there's a lot of vibration and shock loading going on. Um, you have the capability to, yeah, validate those, those products in those environments. What is the coolest part about your guys' job? The coolest part, part about my job and just working at Horton in general is just the variety and the challenge with all of the different applications that we have there's always something new it seems like every day every week um something new to figure out and um it's it's really fun and uh, have great people to work with as well so it's um that's that's what i think is really cool since you've done like both jobs um why did you want to go into sales from app engineering um mostly because um I wanted to get more customer interface, um, okay. and I also thought it was a unique combination of skill sets, and I thought it would just open more doors for me. For sure. Nice. Brian, so, what's the coolest part of your job? For me, it's, it's like Neil was saying, it's, it's a love-hate relationship. You get to wear a lot of different hats, so you get to look at costs and designs and working with manufacturing, um, working with all the different departments just to get a part of product released to market um but yeah there's a lot, a lot of good people that work here uh, it's a lot of fun we have a lot of fun we work hard but we also have a lot of fun what has been the highlight of both your guys's careers at horton uh probably the highlight is um you know launch launch new products um probably i, I got a couple of patents from um an early product that i released years ago um that's probably probably the highlight but just the the day-to-day and um designing new parts and um working with customers getting to work with nicole and i help getting to work with you and nicole (laughs) and you know help helping customers solve their solve their problems yeah i'd I'd say i'd you know i feel like i have a lot of highlights but the really the one that sticks out to me is really just the opportunity that horton gave me um, when they asked me to go over to Europe, and that was always something that I wanted to do, um, but I was never the type of person to just grab a backpack and, you know, book a one-way ticket, mm-hmm. you know, to Europe and hitchhike around, you know, Europe. So, um, so that was yeah, a really great opportunity, and I just think it really, um, yeah, it created just a lot of it was a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. Um, and uh, it was just, yeah, a great, great part of, uh, of, of working here. Did you – what was something you did for fun while working over in Europe outside of work? Travel, yeah. What's your favorite place so, you traveled to all over there? Probably the Swiss Alps was pretty nice. Oh, Sounds that pretty cool. Yeah. Porto and Portugal is pretty cool. Do you guys have anything else to add for FIAD to close out? Yeah, it was, it's been uh, 16 years of, of uh, working with Hort. It's been fun. It's challenging. It's a good group of people. Um, 
Keeps you busy. I'm always waiting for Neil to try and put a H tech on an LCV 20. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen someday. But someday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that makes it interesting. Just, but yeah, but I mean, this kind of stuff, you know, me and, you know, Brian and I work on this all the time, and these are standard applications, and, um, you know, we'd, uh, we, we do have, um, you know, a lot of, um, opportunities out there and uh, there are certain uh, there's a lot of value that we can add on these types of components especially mm-hmm. in drive hub assemblies for example um, we're we're good at it we're good at assembling them we're good at machining parts turning parts um, our uh, OTD and PPM numbers with our customers are absolutely fantastic good. Um, and um, yeah so it's an area that we're yeah, trying to find more more opportunities for, and it's a growing area for Horton. It's uh, the Fiat, the Fiat Arena. Very nice. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Our next episode will be on electrification, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. <laughs>